Hello, friends. Welcome to another Rad Pod Truth Survives Breaking News special. Our second one. We are so honored to have Dr. Charles Creel with us. He and, of course, Kat Gellin uh, co direct the most important films, in my estimation, on disinformation. People You May Know, a very critical documentary. If you haven't seen it, please do. And Disinformed, uh, which features a fantastic. Uh, a critical quote from Wah. <laughs> uh, I'm just joking. I'm very thrilled that that is actually being seen because uh, more people need to see it. It's how people are being radicalized. And we just learned, you know, of another woman who died from COVID who was perfectly normal before she was mm -hmm. radicalized online due to an injury and hearing her children's reports uh, was just absolutely tragic. So we have you here in this breaking news special because we're so excited because you happen to be working on some very critical global legislation. And uh, the breaker really is about the EU taking aims at social media harms with a landmark new law. Let's start there and let's talk about other uh, legislation that you're working on. Okay, terrific. Um, so yes, so the there is new legislation that has um, been brought to bear. Uh, it was negotiated. The story goes that it was negotiated on Saturday after 18 hours of negotiations. But obviously, this has been a negotiation for a very long time. Um, it's the DSP. Help me out. Sorry. It's the Digital Safety Policy. Is that correct? Yeah, D yeah, yeah. DSA, I think. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, the D Digital <laughs> Yeah, we know, we know the contents, not necessarily what the initials stand for. Um, well, there's so many different things in play. This is just one of them. So let's get, let's start with this one, then tell us what you're doing in the UK, which I think sounds really yeah, absolutely. So DSP is the EU's law. Also, um, the United Kingdom is currently working on the online safety bill um, that was uh, published last year. Um, the Joint Committee on the Online Safety Bill, which I've been advising, then published a report on that in December. It's had two readings so far. We're expecting a third reading. And perhaps uh, it will become law by the end of the year. We say by the Queen's speech is the way that we, we talk about it. Um, wow. And this should be a far more significant bill than even the EU's bill. But it depends on how it lands in its final form, because making the sausage is very difficult and legislation goes through lots of processes. Um, yep. There are significant differences between the EU's bill and the uh, online safety bill, and we can get into those. Um, but another thing that I'm working on is a current study on online uh, political advertising. And this is a study across several nations in the, in the world, and that's with the International Foundation for Electoral Systems in Washington, DC. And this should be a seminal study. Um, and we can talk a little bit about that too. Oh my God, I'm so excited. We are a show that investigates disinformation. Uh, Americans have been mind fucked for many years now, uh, and it's been happening. Um, obviously, you were heavily involved in exposing Cambridge Analytica and what was happening there. Should we be hopeful? Let's start with the, uh, the Digital Safety Act. Should we be hopeful that there is some action and accountability happening uh, in relation to online harms? Well, I think we should absolutely be hopeful. And I mean, you know, I was uh, reading over the news about it this morning, and I was reminded that five or six years ago, I was saying things like, um, we should consider breaking up Facebook as a monopoly. We should consider breaking up Google on antitrust laws, um, that we are actually engaged in World War III, um, that Ukraine is a hot lab for disinformation and disinformation processes. And I sounded like a madman. Fortunately, I kept most of that talk to myself, um, except that about seven years ago in Kiev, interestingly, I gave a, a talk to a number of different NGOs saying that they needed to get their operation off Facebook and, and a number of different um, independent journalism organizations in countries that are uh, formerly part of the Soviet Union, that it was important to move off of Facebook because Facebook ultimately would control their distribution and then they would lock it down and they wouldn't be able to afford to advertise enough to get their news out. Um, and again, that all sounded like mad speech. But about four years ago, it stopped sounding like it was mad and Parliament wanted to hear about it. And now we're seeing legislation. So I think that's really very hopeful. Now, what we should worry about um, 
there are a lot of detailed questions I have, but the primary thing is, how is enforcement going to work here? Mm -hmm. And is there going to be sufficient budget for enforcement of these new yeah. laws? Yep, that's a great question. I've had a similar question for the uh, for the class action settlement against Facebook uh, for their content moderation. They had all these provisions that they were supposed to put in place, such as counseling, you know, a certain number of hours, et cetera. And, uh, uh, you know, how is that going to be enforced? How is that going to be handled? How is that going to be uh, built into their their hourly uh, schedule? But um, has yet to come out. So, but um, so, anyway, yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. apparently, what a, time in what, we, what a time in which we live. I just want to say you sent us everything that said that Facebook knew this was coming down and moved uh, moderators out. What happened? Uh, well, that was that was when uh, GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation, came into force, which I think was 2018, if I'm right about that. Um, right. GDPR looked really powerful, and it was going to be a way to protect individuals' data across Europe. Um, it, if even if a company was based elsewhere, like Facebook in Silicon Valley, um, if they were pro processing the data of EU citizens and they were subject to the GDPR, um, if they were processing data from other countries, but doing so in Europe, they were going to be subject to GDPR. And just before GDPR came into force, Facebook moved the processing of all Facebook accounts that were not European off European shores. Mm -hmm. so they would not be subject to the GDPR. Now, GDPR is not that demanding. It's yeah. not that difficult. It's, it's, it's pretty much just about reasonable protection of the data of your users. But that you would move most of your users away from that law um, tells a lot. You know, there's a thing about legislation. Legislation is not there uh, in order to control the actions of reasonable people. Legislation is there to bring enforcement against bullies. And most of these big tech companies are bullies because most VCs are bullies. Because yeah. VCs are bullies, then boardrooms are full of bullies, right. and then the business practices are based on being unreasonable. You have the sociopathic business model at that point, yeah. That's yeah. indeed so, the case. So we have a saying in America, oh, they're too big to fail. Um, I would like to change that and say that they're too big to be trusted. Um, one of the things you say with, uh, you know, the OSB in the UK is that these technology executives will be uh, beholden to the law and could face, you know, civil penalties and criminal time in prison. Is that still a part of, of the OSB as far as you know? Uh, so the online safety bill, I think the criminal provision has been taken out, but again, we can't really predict what it's going to yeah. look like when the time comes. Um, but I think without a criminal provision, uh, and let me, let me just talk about that briefly so the listeners understand. Mm -hmm. It's the idea that should one of these data giants, um, which I know I'm including the social media networks with that and Amazon, a retail giant in data, um, should one of these data giants break the law, um, they have the opportunity to correct that and pay a penalty. But if they continue to break the law, uh, then somebody within the company who has been designated as the data officer should go to jail. There should be a carceral sentence. Now, my personal opinion is that somebody should be from the board of directors um, so that it has <laughs> real teeth, not that yeah. you just name a patsy, pay them right. well, yeah. and then don't empower them enough. Yeah. Um, but it should be from the board of directors. The reason you have to do this, and it's so terribly important, is that these companies have so much money that even if you're talking about a fine into the billions, they can just fold that into their annual business model. That's Which right. they do frequently, and I've seen that in a lot of uh, uh, healthcare cases, and you know, uh, defective product cases, things like that. They'll right. just they'll just fold in their. Uh, you know the uh, you know two point five billion dollars in Johnson Johnson's case, they'll fold it into the shareholders' dividends. They'll release it in their mm -hmm. in their in the quarterly reports, and and they just pay the fine, this cost of doing business, and they move on. And That's without any right, without any, sure. without any teeth or sort of criminal action, which we've been pushing for for years now, um, they just pay the fine and move on. You know, and and it's, it's, if it's not a part, if it's not a part of the EU's law, if it's if it ultimately it's not a part of the UK's law, then we as citizens have really lost something. So I would be disappointed to see it if it's not there. It could come. 
yeah. laws change. You know, we 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 evolve and progress. One hopes. Mm -hmm. um, although we I just feel like what I'm hearing without the criminal provision is what has continually hampered justice in America when it comes to high level white collar criming. Oh, yeah. And that is, I think about Deutsche Bank, you know, oh, they're going to process, you know, $10 billion of oligarch cash and then pay a $600 million fine and they keep on trucking along, you know, and if, if and, and I were, we have a friend who's a former IRS criminal investigator who a year and a half ago when we were talking, he said they have to bring back the Yates Memorandum, which actually would put white collar criminals behind bars if they did not uh, follow the law when it comes to this type of these types of financial crimes. And without that kind of enforcement, I just feel like you're always going to have, you know, Elon Musk at L acting like masters of the universe. And we've got to stop that. So this is absolutely essential that there be carceral sentences for mm -hmm. this reason. It's also it's also really important that it be there for electoral law um, and online electoral law specifically, because if you have a brief, if you have a breach of electoral law. So at the moment, there are almost no countries in the world that have very specific legislation around, say, spending caps on online political advertising. But no specific legislation. And in the UK, 75% of political advertising is now online and there is no specific legislation. Okay. If you don't, if you don't have a system where you have clearly identified breaches of the law and you've funded enforcement and monitoring to the point where they can very quickly address this, get things taken down, but also prosecute straight away. Mm -hmm. And let me add to, with that prosecution, there must be an opportunity for appeal so the law is not abused. But if all of that can't happen really quickly within the electoral cycle, then by the time the issue and the breach is addressed, the person who committed it is already in office and it ain't gonna happen. No. Wow. Yeah, you've, all, you, all you've done is legalized, you know, paying for, uh, you know, illegal political activity, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that, that's all that is. If no, if, if no one's going to jail and, and, you know, there's a big organization paying the money. Uh, I have one question, um, you know, for you. So in terms of uh, white collar crime and the guys at the top, right? making those kinds of things a crime and, and putting people in jail is critical. I also think that there's a lot of sort of, you know, misdemeanor, low level crime that isn't actually considered a crime online that should be right. Like it, there's things like harassment in the oh, real yeah. world, right? Yeah, big time. Yep. There's, Gangsta. you know, running, running around. Like in my example is always like if you're in the living room, if you're in a grocery store and 50 people come around and start screaming, you know, about how horrible you are, like you can call the cops. But online, like there's there's no penalties, there's no enforcement, there's no way to even there's nobody to tell, right? No. So so well, I don't want to criminalize people's um, speech in any way. I also think that it shouldn't be okay for people to just go around psychologically traumatizing people, um, mm -hmm. you know, for fun and profit. So let me say two things to that. I'm going to say them real quick so that I, Word. or I speak at length because I don't want to forget what I, the two things I want to say. Um, one is I'd like to talk about legal but harmful. I, legal but harmful and I, and then I would like to talk about online misogyny um, so first, first on the uh, the legal issue you know if it's if it's illegal in real life then it should be illegal online that's pretty straightforward uh, and, and I don't think anybody that it, it shouldn't be a mystery you know we've spent hundreds of we've hundreds of years centuries now with civil society and the Enlightenment project and 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 the rule of law and for the sake of innovation and Silicon Valley profits, we've decided to suspend that the last 30 years. Why? That's a long story. And, and you know, I'm, hope, I'm working on a project on that now. But, um, you know, it's not only what's illegal, but it's also what is legal but is harmful online. We need to address that. And we need to have legislation around that. You know, and there are many things that are legal but are harmful. And if they happen in everyday life, you'll find yourself at the end of a civil lawsuit. Mm -hmm. um, and so we need that kind of provision to happen. 
Um, the other thing I'd like to talk about is online misogyny. You know, we have enough trouble just getting the 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 rights of women encoded into law and specifically these online laws as it is. And I've been in the middle of debate about this um, in legislative halls and the old white men don't want it to happen. Um, so we need we need for that kind of thing to happen. But we also need to recognize, look, there are people, there are women who are being seriously injured. Their lives are being yeah. damaged. They're, yeah. they're the victims of real world assault and it's coming mm -hmm. from online harassment. And that mm -hmm. online harassment is ideologically driven. And a big part of that is grooming people mm -hmm. in order to turn them into extremists. And now That's what right. you're really talking about is you're talking about terrorism. Ms. And Ms. I, Ms. I think Thank we need you. to speak about uh, online misogyny and uh, harassment and assault in in the terms of extremism and terrorism. Yep. Very well yeah. said. Yeah. Thank you. Actually, I, I would I would offer Dr. Creel that there is, you know, just yesterday there was an instance of terrorism spurred by online radicalization. Uh, Raymond Spencer in Washington D.C. shot and injured four people. And while he was doing so, he posted his video on 4chan, which is one of the cesspools of the internet. Yeah. So, I mean, just just to to back up the, what you're you're saying, Dr. Grail, the uh, uh, a lot of the the alt right, the radicalization, all of that comes from um, Gamergate, comes from the yeah. incel movement, okay. That's um, right. and Gamergate was pure misogyny right? mm -hmm. like, it was pure it misogyny, was misogyny and then it was politicized and then right. it was politicized precisely like and, and i i say this you know a lot of people don't know that the term red pill which has been now basically appropriated as a you know white supremacist thing started as a misogyny thing yeah. red pill on reddit was a misogyny forum it was an incel forum and it literally that literal term changed from we're going to target women to we're going to target we're going to scapegoat everybody else and it became a pure fascist um pl play yeah, so and you know misogyny yeah. turns into fascism um that's right so much. and here's and here's the thing guys is that uh you know these companies know that right and so what we're seeing what we're seeing now and you guys know this i've been following the case of the the uh the mother who's brought suit against Snapchat for her daughter committed suicide as a result of continued online harassment. And she's attempt attempting to, uh, you know, share some of that liability, that blame with the, com the company itself. Mm -hmm. uh, and what we're going to see in the U.S., I believe, if, if there isn't any significant legislation, is you're going to see these trial attorneys get very, very clever. And one of the things I think that we'll end up seeing them doing is going after it as a product defect. So the product itself is defective and they knew at a certain date ahead of time there could wow. have been it could have been built a different way they chose to build it this way there was an option to build it this way you know the same things that you have to show when you show a medical device defect or a product defect i think you could show for a platform and i think there would be some very interesting conversations to be had if taking that approach Absolutely. so rather than addiction by design what we need is safety by design exactly online platform and they chose they, there was an option to do it the other really? way and they chose to do it this way. That's exactly. a defect. Yep. And that and then that choose, resulted in these injuries. And they choose day by day because day by day they're reviewing analytics. Day by day they see the impact of what's happening. It's a choice that is made over and over and over that's again. Right. That's and right. One of the things that's in the European law is that company online retailers, for example, like Amazon, um, need to stop selling either illicit or dangerous product. That's right. That's great. And they should do. And that's terrific. And you know, mostly that protects trademark holders, but fine. Um, it's also a dangerous product. But what if the product that it's being sold through is in fact dangerous? What mm -hmm. if the product that it's being advertised with is in fact dangerous? That's right. Shouldn't mm -hmm. Facebook and Twitter and Amazon and TikTok be subject to laws around around harms? Certainly. Yes. Certainly. Yep. Definitively. Uh, and we talk, you know, I think you say it. Facebook is a crime scene. And they are, to, Facebook is a crime scene. They still exist. What I'm hearing 
is exactly what we went through with the, uh, you know, thank you for not smoking. It's like literally like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the tobacco companies always had a seat at the table and it took, you know, decade after decade after decade to finally actually put a warning label on a pack of cigarettes. And it's like, you know, these guys are continually at the table during these conversations. I'm talking about the tech, the, the you know, tech bros up there mm -hmm. and you know, it absolutely is long past, uh, you know, D-Day here. We are not the wild, wild west anymore. We know what these yep. harms are. I think I'm actually quoting you when I say that. Well, and, also, uh, to, that, to, the, that point, the, to that point, Heidi, yeah. the, uh, the initial patent that Facebook filed for its social network includes a provision in it very art well articulated that says, we don't know how to do it yet, but content moderation is going to be very important for this platform. This was, you know, in 2002 or three or whatever it was. So they knew back then they just said, and that's fine for the patent. We don't know how to do it, but that's going to be a huge part of it. It's going to be very yeah. important in the initial patent from that time period. So Point to see it. how little they, they've really done significant, significantly since they knew when the idea came up that this would be important and they have chosen time and time again to either assign it out to some third party, Accenture, whoever, and not, you know, try and just bury it away and just not deal with it. They knew that it was going to be hugely important. And we've read the brought... reports of the despair and the depression and it's what so the moderators horrifying. go through. Like, yeah. you know, we all have children. All five of us have children. And we have to ask ourselves every freaking day, what kind of world do we want them to be raised in? I do not want this train to continue on this track. And that is so why we wanted to do this breaking news special with you, because there is a little bit of hope in this legislation, but we need it. We need it now and we need it hard and it needs yeah. to be. Well. Just one, what, one more thing about legislators, you know, um, we, we tend to, we laugh at them when they interview Mark Zuckerberg and they ask stupid questions, right? But most of those legislators, got into office because they have very sophisticated social media operations. Yes, that's right. They're not stupid. They yeah. know what they're looking at. They know the power of social media and they know what it does. So we need to ask more of those people too. Good point. Very good point. Oh um, my God. I think that's that wonderful. Might be it. Yes. I think it's time for us guys, but thank you so much, Dr. Kirill. This was yet, yet another fantastic interview. Yeah. And is, is there one is there one last line you can plant uh, in the seeds of our viewer who are global? One last like broad takeaway for people. I think I think a really broad take on this is a part of everything that we've talked about has been bullying. When you're talking about bullying, you're talking about psychopaths, and that's what laws are for. I Perfect. just I thank you <laughs> so much minutes. for that. I thank you so much for that. That was amazing. Well, thank you thank so you, much sir. for thank participating you. in our thank second you. breaking news special. And whatever you're doing uh, undercover down south, keep it up because I'm very <laughs> brilliant. Please give our love to Pat and your daughter, and uh, hopefully we'll see you soon.